It consists of the uterine body, the site of deposition of frozen semen and the two uterine horns. The horns or the coronoa are joined by the dorsal intracoronal ligament and the ventral intracoronal ligament, the ventral of which is stronger. Retraction or rolling of the uterus is completed by grasping the ventral intracoronal ligament with the middle fingers and pulling the uterus back into the pelvic cavity. When we look at the uterus, it appears that the horns bifurcate at the level of the intercoronal ligaments. However, this is only the false bifurcation while the true bifurcation is located at the site of junction with the body of the uterus. The two uterine horns then continue as the oviduct. is a highly tortuous convoluted tubule supported by the mesosalphings and feels wiry on palpation. It consists of three parts, the funnel shaped infundibulum which picks up the ovum, the distal dilated ampulla and the narrow isthmus. At the junction of the isthmus and the uterus is the utero-tubal junction which regulates the entry of sperms into the oviduct and that of the embryo into the uterus. Isthmus opens into the uterus through the ostium tubae uterinum. The opening of the infundibulum is called as ostium tubae abdomini. To show this opening better, a straw is introduced into the ostium tubae abdomini. The utero-ovarian ligament attaches the ovary to the uterus while the meso-ovarium attaches the ovary to the oviduct. The two ligaments form the ovarian bursa or the pocket. The ovaries are oval or round in shape and contain follicles or corpus luteum in different stages of development. Meso-ovarium houses the blood, lymphatic vessels and nerves that supply the ovary and forms the hilus. This is another clip of an ovary showing a mature corpus luteum and a follicle. Here you can see the corpus luteum projecting out of the surface with a crown, a neck and the point of ovulation. The follicle appears as a smooth, round, fluid-filled structure that fluctuates on palpation. <laughs>